Oh god, this is all so much worse than I remember it being. Undertale is pretty famous and infamous around the internet. It started out as a small indie game and blew up spawning a fandom so large that Sans got propelled into Smash. But of course, the fandom has its rotten apples. From the Needle incident to the harassment of Flowerfell creators, the fandom has come to be known for its young and rabid fanbase, which is unfortunate considering the main message of Undertale was to show mercy and spread kindness. But we can't entirely blame these kids for what they're doing. They're young and impressionable and don't know how to act properly yet, and it's our job to guide these kids to be better. And speaking of people who don't use their influence properly and actually harm kids instead of guiding them, let's talk about a certain creator, shall we? Blog the Great Rogue I'm sure anyone who's been in the Undertale community has heard that name at least once or has come into contact with her art or one of her AUs. Rogue is a very popular artist who rose to prominence with the Undertale community and is the creator of popular AUs like Nerd and Jock, Vampireverse, PJ's Daycare, and Little Jammy Hood. They're most well known for their depiction of the ship Paper Fresh, a ship between Crayon Queen's Fresh Tail Sands and Seven Good Angels Paper Jam. Obviously, if you've been on the channel, you already know how I feel about Sansus, but we'll shove that annoyance of mine aside because there are bigger issues here than just shipping Sans with himself is gross. Over these last few months, more and more people have started pointing out the gross things that Rogue has chosen to depict in their art, and Rogue has even addressed a few of these things. Keyword being a few. This video will be dissecting the works that I could find from what I considered to be the least bad to the worst. And oh boy was the worst a tough one to decide because they're all so very, very, very terrible. Also, I'm sorry for the poor quality YouTube slideshow pictures. I could not, for the life of me, find out how to use Tumblr properly, and it appears that Rogue has deleted a majority if not all of her old comics off her Tumblr. That or I'm just that bad at using Tumblr. Without further ado, let's get started. This, in my opinion, is the least bad out of everything I'm going to be talking about, and that's really saying something because it's the only AU that does not depict any sort of non-consensual sexual acts. The first post I could find on Rogue's blog with the PJ's daycare tag was posted on July 26th of 2016, so I'm going to have to assume that's when this AU started. The AU centers around Paper Jam, who is 25 and is the caretaker of a preschool. The kids' sanses are assumed to be around 1 to 6 years old, with the exception of kids like Yoshi, Palette, Goth, and Cray being somewhere around 12. Side characters like Gradient, Blue Screen, Fika, Toots, and Vivi are all assumed to be adults. Now, onto the first few panels we'll be looking at. Right at the start of the comic, we're having a lot of problems. I'm gonna marry you when I grow up! How about you guys get married now, Fresh? Yes! Great idea! Let's go get married right now! Arrow, you'll be my best man! Heck no! Aww, I call bridesmaid! Go on then, go get dressed! We don't have all day! Fresh, please, I have other kids to take care of. Kid Fresh suddenly grows up to an adult. How would PJ react? Wh what? Oh no, this is weird. Why is he hot? Can we get married now? Hey PJ, are you actually gonna marry Fresh at such a young age? Or are you just playing along? What? I'm not doing either of those things. You're the ones that are encouraging him. Go wear your wedding dress! Is Fresh still trying to marry Jammy at the moment? <laughs> PJ, how dare you! You've made the small cry! Now go and say something nice to Fresh. Please, it's not like that. Let me just talk to him. Fresh, sweetie, let's talk about this, shall we? <laughs> I won't let you hurt my brother anymore. Error. Error. I'm so proud. It's so sweet of you to stand for your brother like that. <laughs> Big fool. <laughs> How does Ink react to Error standing up for his bro? <gasps> error helped his wall. Did Paper Jam and Little Fresh ever make up the whole crying incident? Fresh, we talked about this. I told you that you need to grow up first and you agree. I changed my mind. I want to marry you now. 
I'm watching you. Plots centered around little kids growing up to marry someone is a pretty cute thing to include in the story. But if the other person is an adult, yeah, do you see the problem here? Never should you ever be teaching itty bitty tiny little kids that a kid and an adult is an alright thing if the adult waits for the kid to grow older, as it is implied that PJ would accept Fresh once he's old enough. That's not cute, that's just creepy. And the fact that multiple adults play along into this, why are you encouraging this child? This child should be pulled aside for a long talk about why it's not okay. And the adamant refusal of adults to properly explain to Fresh why this kind of thing is wrong leads to PJ later down the line being mistaken for a pedo, and I'll get to that when we get that far into the story. At least, PJ doesn't seem to be encouraging this kind of behavior, but then you get this line. Marriage isn't necessary as long as we love each other, don't you think? You love me? Now, what kind of silly question is that? Of course I do. <laughs> All throughout the comic, it has been implied that Fresh is seeking out PJ romantically, so when PJ says this, I can only hope and give him the benefit of the doubt that he means his love is parental, but younger kids like Fresh and the people following this ask blog aren't going to be able to pick up on that. And I know these are very young children based on the way these asks are spelt. Next up on the chopping board, we'll be talking about this scene. Error decided to hold Inky's little hand. I, I just thought that maybe if my bro wants to get married, then why not me too? I heard that people get married with who they really like, and I thought you'd fit perfectly because, well, because I like you. By juxtaposing Error and Ink's marriage with Fresh and Paper Jam, the implication that PJ and Fresh will one day also be getting married is again very strange and very creepy. What Fresh and PJ are set up to be is not a cute ubu relationship. If we're to take this ship as canon in this AU later down the line, then Fresh is being conditioned by repeated affirmation from other people and himself to want a relationship with someone who is about five times his age. What PJ is doing could be read into as grooming Fresh by setting the expectation they'll have a relationship once he's older, but I'm hesitant to put that label here indefinitely because PJ on some level does discourage Fresh from these actions. Either way, this is creepy and gross and trying to play it off as another cute one-sided crush is so inappropriate to be portraying to your young fans. And speaking of your young fans, Rogue is known to draw a lot of NSFW and it definitely greatly affects her audience. How do I know? One of the asks pulls Kinder Error aside to give him the birds and the bees talk. Someone thought it was appropriate to give this three to six year old the birds and the bees talk. NSFW has been so normalized in Rogue's community that no one even batted an eye at this, beyond PJ scolding the asker. Little Era, we have to have the talk. Since you are married now to Inky, you have to spend more time with him. One hour later. And that's how babies are made. That kind of talk is not accepted in my daycare. This should not have been a comment made anywhere near a kid who's that young. Can you see the influence that Rogue's content has on these kids? Remember when I told you that PJ being a pedo would be a plot point? Yeah, this is where that comes in. Some shenanigans involving the Askers end up with PJ's girlfriend believing him to be a pedophile. PJ, how dare you cheat on poor Fresh! Wait, Fresh? Who's Fresh? Whoa, calm down, it's not what you think. Look behind you, that's Fresh! F fresh? Hi. Oh, OMG, get away from me, you pedo! What? No! So, what happens to Fresh now? What are you doing here? Um, bug hunting? Fresh, you messed everything up! Now his girlfriend thinks he's a pedo! <sighs> Come on, we need to go explain things to her. But I don't wanna! Well, too bad, cause you're gonna. Oh, you're back. But why did you take Fresh from- No, officer! <laughs> hey, what's going- Shut up, sicko! Mr. PJ! Okay, sweetie, he won't hurt you no more. And it's scary that this whole situation is being portrayed as a joke. Some adult 25-year-old man telling a 3-year-old kid they'll get married in the future. That's a real reason for concern there. When the joke is just, haha, look at this person being mistaken for a pedo, you should really rethink your joke because that's not funny. And even at this point in the story, no one is explaining to Fresh why this is bad. 
Why is no one explaining? Do they have Rogue holding a gun to their head, preventing them from doing so? This makes no sense why you wouldn't tell this highly impressionable child why what they want is bad. Because even after this incident, Fresh is still insistent on marrying PJ. Later on in the comic, the only thing stopping Fresh from approaching PJ while he's out on a date isn't the fact that he understands why wanting a relationship with PJ is fundamentally wrong, but because he doesn't want the police to show up again. This is such a terrible lesson to be leaving with kids, because the audience is rooting for Fresh, because they like the Paper Fresh ship. Okay. Let's take a break from the implied pedophilia and grooming and talk about something equally as bad, if not arguably worse. Shaming someone for a suicide attempt. Your ear holes heard me right. Shaming someone for a suicide attempt. This all starts when Error falls ill and has to be taken to the hospital. Gino, who has previously been implied to be acting older than he really is, has an emotional outburst. Hey, I wonder how PJ will react if Error fell sick and day candy. Other kids, they go crazy, or would they not be bothered? Don't cry, kids. We did everything we can to help. He's fine. Mr. PJ, please help my brother. <laughs> well, dying. <laughs> he just has a flu, you babies. Gino, stop being rude. I mean, I know you're the oldest, but that doesn't give you the right to be rude. I'm not being rude. I'm just saying the truth here. I'd be worried if it was something serious, but it's just a flu. But Gino, some people die from the flu. Now, now, let's not assume the worst here. Gino, you know, don't you? You know, error will die soon. No, oh, come on, Gino, be strong. You're not a crybaby like your brothers. <sighs> it's obvious that you're the one being worried, so please don't. Everything will be just fine. Is baby Arrow still sick? Alright Arrow, all your friends are worried about you. Come on, wake up so you can go reassure them, cause they didn't believe me. Okay now, I think you had enough sleep sweetie. Uh, I'm not asking you to do much, just uh, open your eyes at least. Error? Error? Please. Ugh! PJ, what the fuck are you waiting for? Run to a hospital! Call a doctor! I don't know, but now! Bro, is everything alright in de- ah! Oh no, he took error with him, poor little guy. <laughs> Gino, what's wrong with error? Holy baby error dead? PJ, how could you kill a child? You're a murderer, why? Shut up, he's not dead. Come on, you hunk of junk! I bet that Gino is in a hella worried state now that Era's going to hospital. Gino? Why? Why aren't you answering me? <laughs> Poor naive little brother. Don't you get it? It's all over. There's no such thing as error anymore. It's just you and me in this world, Fresh. It's just you and me. What does Gino think of Blue and Dream's speech? You are right about everything. This place is filled with so much love and happiness. You really are all like a family. But me? I'm nothing but a heartless monster. I never supported my own family. I never was there for my sick brother. And I broke my baby brother's little heart. But you all managed to put a smile on his face. You really are the most wonderful people I've ever met. I don't deserve any of you. Sorry for everything. Okay, that's alright. Gino seems to be dealing with some depression, and it's alright to explore how to help kids face their fe- Mr. PJ to the rescue! <gasps> no way! Gino, what do you think you're doing? Holy fuck, what? That's your reaction to a kid trying to kill himself because he feels useless and worthless? What the fuck? If you couldn't tell, I have a huge, huge issue with how Gino's suicide is played out. This is a horrendous depiction of mental health, and it makes 13 Reasons Why look like a masterpiece in comparison. First of all, when Gino is found by Pallet and Goth, and he's about to jump, you wanna know who's being comforted? Not fucking Gino! Where is Gino? I'm crying! <sighs> Goth, have you- Shh. Huh? What are you looking? Ah! N 
the hell, Gino? Would you please stay still? I'll just come to you myself. So there's no need to be scared or... Ah! It's okay, Goth. He's alright. He just moved a little bit. I understand that this sort of event will no doubt leave scars on those who are close to the victim, but in the crucial moment, you should be focusing your care and attention on the person about to jump. It's not a hard concept to grasp. And it gets worse. When PJ comes on the scene, he's acting like a disappointed, angry parent. You're here to tell me about my brother, right, Mr. PJ? It's okay. I already know. And I'll join him soon. Gino! Huh? Gino, see? He's okay! He's alive! Please don't kill yourself! Gino, you're the oldest and the wisest of your brothers. You'd know better than to assume the worst and try such things. Don't leave me, Gino! <laughs> Calm down, Gino. Error is okay. Now get out from here and come to see your little brother. Gino! Uh, error! You're the one who shouldn't have left me! He's alive! Yes! I'm so proud of Gino! Never do that again! Gino, how could you try such a thing? You're just a kid for Pete's sake! I'm sorry! That's enough, Gino! Stop acting more than your age all the time! Don't you ever try something so absurd in the near or even far future! That's never the answer, Gino. Never forget that you'll always matter to me, to your family, and everyone back at the daycare. PJ, will you tell CQ about this? I'll think this is something that she should be aware of. I don't know. I mean, everything is alright now, so... All I can say is that there's no need for me to call her. I'll just try to tell her the whole thing when she comes to pick him up. I cannot stress more what a gross misrepresentation of suicide this is. Suicide here is being treated as a plot point to move the story forward. It's being treated as Gino being overdramatic and acting older than he is. And that's... that's absolutely horrendous! You wanna know what makes people jump? Exactly what PJ is saying here. Suicidal people already feel like they're making a mountain out of a molehill every day. And being told that while they're on the brink of going through with ending their life, you may as fucking well have shoved Gino off that cliff yourself. You're giving validation to the darkest thoughts that a person could possibly have. And to think that Rogue thought this was any sort of acceptable to include in this comic? I just... I, I don't understand how anyone could depict suicide in this way! It reads as a tone-deaf person who doesn't understand depression or how to go about addressing it, and it's a god-awful message to be sending to your young, impressionable fanbase. Gino is being scolded for having these sort of thoughts. He's being scolded for feeling so terrible that he would rather end his own life as atonement than continue living. How did the voice actors recording this not pick up on what a terrible fucking thing this is to say to someone about to kill themselves? Suicide is being trivialized as a problem, and this is detrimental to the kids who are going through depression and watching this shit. And you can see from these asks that kids don't understand why suicide is bad. Don't ever do this again? As if suicidal people have a choice in how they're acting? They're not choosing to do this. They're in so much pain being alive that they would rather die than keep on living. Acting as if Gino had a choice in this and just chose to do this is so abominable. I'm running out of words to describe how horrible this is. And the worst part about all this is the aftermath. None of these characters ever show concern over Gino's mental state ever again for the rest of the comic. And we're just supposed to believe that Gino's over all of this and has gone back to living normally? This is atrocious! A suicidal person would not just suddenly go back to normal after their suicide attempt. There's guilt that you've worried your loved ones to this extent, fear that they'll push you away, you're disgusted with yourself and your actions, and you need to seek professional help to heal properly so you don't try to attempt it again. It's a long, complicated process to recover from a traumatic event like that, but in this comic, it's just brushed off as teehee, another plot point. The fact that no one's talking about how insanely gross this all is, is appalling to me. Rogue's very young audience is taking away the worst interpretation of suicide you could ever give to someone, and I'm terrified of how they will go on to treat people who have depression and are contemplating ending their life. And you can already see the effects her comic has had on these young kids by the asks they're sending her. Unfortunately, I'm not done with this AU, but since I've already covered the topic of why this child ex adult stuff is creepy, we're just going to quickly run down this one. This all starts with Palette trying to deny that he likes Goth, and for some ungodly reason decides to start flirting with Fika, who is an adult. Dude, Palette, why didn't you go for it? Whatever. 
This whole thing is stupid anyway. We're best friends, and we always will be. Pallet, just go follow them, or you'll get left behind. Are you coming? Go on without me. I'll catch up in a bit. This whole adventure has made me thirsty. Better get me a refreshing drink. Huh? She seems lost. Ballet, go talk to your new buddy. She's looking to see if she can apply to PJ's daycare. Really? That's awesome! Wait a minute. She's kind of pretty. If we work together, I'm sure we'll hook up and then I'll forget about this silly thought of mine. <sighs> this is hopeless. What the? Wow! Hey there, good looking. Well, help her out, Palette. Can I help you? The better question is, can I help you? I heard you're looking for PJ's Daker. Lucky for you, this handsome young fellow actually works there. OMG, really? Help me out, please. Well said, Palette. Now show her to the daycare. Let's go then, right this way. Anyway, does the pretty lady have a name? It's Fika, and you are? Palette, Palette Roller. Fika, what do you think of Palette? I love you anyway. He's a nice kid. Um, Fika, Palette is not a kid. <laughs> Wait, he's not? How old are you, Palette? Twelve. He is a kid. He almost made me think I was disrespecting a very short man. Lol, what? Palette is flirting with an adult when he's twelve? It doesn't matter, we're gonna know about each other more. A beautiful romance is gonna blossom between us, we'll get married, and my best friend will be my best man. Why does it have to be an adult? A girl or a guy who is simply not interested in Palette could have worked for this plot. Why did the love interest have to be an adult? It's just such a strange decision, like, like, you couldn't think of any other reason for someone to reject Palette's advances? Why is your default having a kid flirt with someone twice their age? I don't understand. And this scene. Ruru, go see your loved ones. Mr. PJ? Hmm? Can you take me to my Kiki and little brother, please? Uh, um, sure. He said my real name for once. And is he being... nice to me? Why is PJ blushing? You don't have to be blushing to be surprised. This looks like PJ is embarrassed that his crush, who has been ignoring him all this time, is being nice to him. And it's so fucking uncomfortable to look at. That may not have been what Rogue intended for this scene to be, but it sure as hell doesn't change the fact that this scene could be read that way. Okay, back to the plot with Palette and Fika. The characters around Palette and Fika are acting as if this is a bad pairing, because it's getting in the way of Poth. Not because Palette, who is a tween, is trying to flirt with an adult. Yeah, you all have your priorities straight here, I can tell. <laughs> hey, Fika, are you okay? I think you may be suffering from a lack of vitamin me. <laughs> oh, Palette, that's a funny one. What the fuck? Yup. Vivi, you are seeing what are you looking at. Not fake. No, no, that's fine. This is fine. M maybe she's just a friend. Yeah, that's it. Vivi's ship is crumbling right in front of her eyes! Jade, I need you right now! <coughs> yes? Yikes, you're fast! I hope you don't mind, but I brought a friend with me. She loves Poth. Poth! Well, I'm sorry to say that Poth is in danger. She isn't. Palette has tried to make himself believe that Goth isn't his soulmate and he's going to friendzone him if we don't do something about it. <laughs> Yo, what I miss? Everything! We missed everything! And teaching kids that this ship is bad because it's interfering with another ship and not because it's inherently predatory in nature and highly inappropriate is so irresponsible. You can see how the young fans are reacting to this. They're more focused on the fact that this ship is interfering with Poth, rather than the fact that this ship is so inappropriate, it would be literal pedophilia if it happened. I'm done with this mess of an AU. Now get out of here! You can bet I'll be talking about you and your pro shipping some other day, but not today. This one is second because there's the illusion of consent. And when I say illusion, I mean illusion. 
A child cannot consent to an adult. Period. End of story. If you don't know what this AU is about, it's a series of comics that depicts Jammy, who is somewhere around 12 to 13, and Mr. Fresh, who is a young adult. Ink and Error are Jammy's parents, and I know that Jammy is 12 to 13 because Error makes a comment about how Jammy is hitting puberty. This whole AU is built up on Jammy and Fresh lusting after each other, except Jammy is a horny teenager who is latching onto the first person he sees, and Fresh is a goddamn pedophile for finding a literal child attractive. It doesn't help that Error is encouraging this ship. No one should be encouraging this. This is a literal pedophilic ship. What is wrong with people these days? I don't think I should have to explain why a 20-something year old should not be thirsting after a tween. And even if, even if Fresh is 18, he would still be a goddamn pedophile. Jammy does not know the full extent of what's happening because his brain is not even halfway developed. He's not even a goddamn teenager yet. Let's not forget this scene. This is sexual assault on Jammy's end. Fresh is asleep. He cannot consent to this happening. Drawing this as if it's any sort of okay is... I've run out of words that mean terrible to describe how terrible this is. And people who see this think it's okay? No, it's not! It's sexual assault, and to make it look cute and okay is such a grave and disgusting choice, Rogue. There are other ways to portray tension and a sense of forbiddenness in a relationship other than making one an adult and one a child or drawing literal rape. And the fact that Rogue defaults to this disturbs me greatly. Oh, and that's not even touching on the issue that Rogue is looting a child. This, this is actual child porn. Child pornography, also called child sexual abuse material or child porn, is pornography that exploits children for sexual stimulation. It may be produced with the direct involvement of sexual assault of a child, also known as sexual abuse images, or it may be simulated child pornography. Abuse of child occurs during the sexual acts and lacks a vicious exhibitions of genitals or pubic areas which are recorded in the production of child pornography. Child pornography may use a variety of mediums including writings, magazines, photos, sculptures, drawings, cartoons, paintings, animation, sound recording, film, video, and video games. Child pornography may be created for profit or other reasons. Rogue ludes minors and nothing anyone says can excuse that fact. And Rogue repeatedly looting minors will come up later on in this video, don't you worry. I'm not going to dissect this AU in as much detail as I did with the last AU, because it's pretty obvious why this is bad. And also because, unlike Rogue, I do not enjoy staring at pedophilic ships and putting flowers around it to make it look pretty. This one is third because there's no repeated images of literal rape, like there is with the next one. And like the last one, I will be speeding through this because I don't have a lot to say. Vampireverse revolves around the vampire overlord's fallacy, his partner, Unker, and their son, Jasper, as well as their butler, Suave. There is a clear power imbalance between the characters Jasper and Suave. Please keep this in mind. My whole issue with this AU is this picture and the caption. Jasper, who's pretending to be drunk, is trying to make Suave actually drunk so he can have his way without his butler fighting back. Do you see anything wrong with this picture? Let me spell it out for you. This is literal rape. Jasper is attempting to rape Swab, and it's being passed off as a teehee cute chip moment. No, nothing about this is cute. Swab is in such a position that he cannot refuse Jasper's actions, and Jasper is all too happy to take advantage of Swab in this position. This is manipulative, disgusting, and abusive behavior that should be shamed and condemned. And the fact that it isn't and is being treated as an uwu cute chip moment is revolting. The winner for the second worst AU is Little Jammy Hood. Yay! We're almost through this nightmare, so let's hurry because I don't want to stay here any longer than I need to. Little Jammy Hood follows Jammy, a very, very young kid, and Fresh, who is the big bad wolf. I'm not sure how old Fresh is in this AU, but seeing as Paper Jam is still going by Jammy in this AU, I'm going to be assuming that Fresh is still a young adult in this AU as well. With that in mind, I hate this AU. I don't know why Rogue defaults to non-consensual sexual acts for funny scenes or plot points, but newsflash, 
sexual harassment and rape are not funny. And when it's being romanticized and glorified like this, I, what do you want me to say about this? It's DISGUSTING! In many of these scenes, Jamie is crying for his mother and telling Fresh to stop, but Fresh shows no consideration for his words and keeps going for his own sexual pleasure, and it's all being framed as if he's doing this because he loves Jamie and can't control himself because he's a wolf. Even the kids who are into this AU are picking up on Fresh's terrible behavior, as can be seen here with this kid saying they don't like how Fresh is hurting Jamie. This entire AU's concept is disgusting! Depicting rape and sexual assault like it is, as a funny, uwu, cute moment because the art style makes it look appealing is fucking gross. Do you know the sort of terrible impact this leaves on kids? It normalizes this in their minds and in extreme cases will try to emulate this kind of behavior because their idol portrayed it in an appealing manner. And no, having Ink react poorly to what's happening is not enough because he is being treated as the punchline. An error is seen as being passive and uncaring about everything, giving the impression that everything is okay and normal. Holy shit! I can't believe that no one's pointed all this out until now because it's so blatantly disgusting. This is what I would consider to be the seventh layer of hell. This one is the worst out of everything I've talked about. You might be asking, how is that possible? And I'm not sure what to tell you other than it gets worse. The Nerd and Jock AU centers around characters like Palette, Goth, Killer, Fresh, you get the idea. One of the main plot points of this AU is between Palette, a Jock, and Goth, a Nerd. These two are adults, I hope. I'm giving Rogue the benefit of the doubt here and making them adults, but that still does dick diddly to absolve her of what she decided to do with these two. Goth and Palette like each other, but Palette is insistent that they stay friends until one day Goth quote unquote snaps and then rapes Palette. I don't know why rape and non-con is so prevalent throughout everything that Rogue makes, and I'm really starting to question her as a person the more I look into all of this. The next day, Palette is obviously not okay, and I need to point this comment out that a fan made about this comic. <laughs> Imagine Palette just stumbling around one day and everyone being like, why is he acting like he's been raped? Rogue's fans have started treating rape as a joke, and it's fucking terrifying that this is a sentiment that is commonly shared amongst her fanbase. And Rogue, by the way, is doing nothing to discourage this. I haven't found a comment, statement, anything that might even suggest that she cares about the people she is affecting this way. I don't believe in deplatforming, but when you're doing shit like this, I don't think you deserve a platform to speak on. Goth reflects just a little bit on how horrendously he is screwed up, not just as a friend, but also as a person, and tries to apologize to Palette as if what he did could be made up for by an apology, or anything his pathetic little brain could come up with. Palette is obviously, justifiably, very upset about all this. There's this one line that I need to talk about. How do you fuck up this badly? I don't understand! This next part of the comic is what I believe to be one of the worst things Rogue has chosen to draw. At first glance, it looks like out of guilt, Goth tries to commit suicide, and is caught in the act by Palette. Again! Do we really have to trivialize suicide like this by using it as a plot point? As there was no build up to this and no addressing the after effects of such a traumatic event except for how it negatively impacted Palette and was used to manipulate him and we'll be getting to that. People in the comments are sad that Goth is feeling this way. Yeah, we can reach a mutual agreement that suicide is something terrible to have to go through. But to completely ignore the fact that Goth is an actual literal rapist? Great, yeah! Everyone's got their priorities straight here. You can see the harmful effects that the comics Rogue makes has on these kids. They completely overlook things like rape, all for the sake of a ship that at this point shouldn't even be happening because one of the partners clearly doesn't give a shit about the other's boundaries and is willing to invade those boundaries and get what they want. It's like Rogue couldn't think of a compelling plot point for Palette to reject God, so she just went, Oh, I know. I'll have one of them rape the other. The amount of mental gymnastics you have to go through to get to that point? I can't fathom it. Returning to the comic, we get this scene of Palette panicking over Goth dying since Goth was his best friend until a day ago and there are still lingering feelings for him. And then we get this outrageous line from Goth. Why are you calling for help? Didn't you want this? This is the most guilt trippy thing I've ever read in my life. Goth here is basically blaming Palette for what's happened because isn't him dying what Palette wanted. Treating Palette's rightfully hateful behavior from before as an excuse to blame him for what's happening now because he didn't get his way? How did a 24-year-old write and see nothing wrong with it? 
How? Someone please tell me. This is disgusting. To be treating a rape victim, lashing out at their rapist as a bad thing is disgusting. Pallet had every right to be angry and hateful towards Goth. He has no reason to accept him back into his life after what Goth did to him. And the lines that come next are just... Here, let me just show you. What are you talking about? I never wanted you to kill yourself. That idea never even crossed my mind. I mean, sure, I was extremely mad at you for what you did, but it's not... It's not like... It's not like I never wanted to do it with you. I just, I tried to stay loyal to our friendship, but it's so hard. You're just so dreamy. I thought maybe someday we could be lovers. I wanted to take things slow before, you know, that's why I was shocked of what happened. I don't know if you remember, but I didn't really fight back or even call for help when you did that to me because cause it wasn't anyone that did that. It was you, and that somehow made me feel safer. You don't have to feel bad anymore. I'm glad you were the one to take my virginity. I love you, goth. Rogue, you're absolutely disgusting for drawing this. There is a huge difference between raping someone, which is what Goth did, and consensually engaging in sexual activity. There's many reasons why Pallet would not have fought back. Shock that the person closest to him is harming him in the worst way someone could ever conceivably harm you, being one of the main factors. Pallet may, at one point, have wanted to be closer to Goth like that, but Goth did not respect his boundaries, and instead of waiting for when Pallet was ready to do that with him, forced himself onto Pallet because he got impatient. Rape and consensual intercourse are so far apart from each other that trying to make it seem like one thing could possibly be the other is abhorrent. These tiny kids who just want to see Goth and Pallet are now reading this type of shit that's telling them it's okay if the person you like rapes you because you already wanted to be with them in the first place. No! Absolutely not! If your romantic interest rapes you, they're showing a clear disregard for your feelings and your boundaries and will take what they want from you when they want. It's not some cute romantic thing because your romantic interest is performing these horrendous acts. It's arguably far, far worse when it's someone you're close to because the emotional scarring that comes from that is so immense that many people never fully heal from it for the rest of their life. This is so beyond not okay to be portraying in your comics to your young child audience. What's even more infuriating is as soon as Palette is molded into the person Goth wants him to be, he no longer wishes to die. If the guilt of hurting someone you loved was really there, what Pellet said would not have changed that said guilt, proving that Goth was using all of this as a manipulation tactic. I don't know what Rogue was trying to portray this scene here as, but as an older person reading this, it's a very obvious guilt trip and the worst depiction of rape I have ever seen in my life. And I've shown this to many friends who have never even seen or heard of Rogue. And do you know what they thought? They couldn't believe that a living, breathing human being made this absolute garbage. The comic goes on and Pallet comes to terms with the fact that he was raped, but it's okay because he wanted it. No, Pallet, you weren't ready, and that means Goth still forced himself upon you. This is not love. This is abusive behavior and should not be treated as something lovey-dovey, ooh ooh cute. Their relationship that never should have happened goes on as normal, and it's gross that Goth, the abuser, gets what he wants from Pallet by using his suicide as a guilt trip. These two are only half my problem with NNJ. Well, they're more like 60%, but potato potato. We're going to look at teacher crushes next. Nightmare is a teacher in NNJ, and his significant other is Muffet, who is also an adult. Killer is a student in Nightmare's class, and he likes Nightmare. He constantly fantasizes about jumping Nightmare's bones, and he's extremely jealous of Muffet. The fans are actually angry and hate Muffet because they want Killer, a student, to be with Nightmare, his teacher. They've been so desensitized to these age gaps that they simply brush over it, even when it's so obviously wrong. This is the effect Rogue's art is having on these kids. One day, Killer decides to make a move on Nightmare and kisses him. I get that this is a plot point, but you did not have to draw in this much detail. We would have gotten the point without the close-up. Thankfully, Nightmare rejects him, but he rejects Killer for all the wrong reasons. He says it's because he loves someone else. Not that, you know, Killer and Nightmare are probably 15-something years apart, and Killer is a minor, and Nightmare is an adult. And the comment continues to treat non-consensual sexual acts as nothing when Dream comes by to calm him down, as if it's just a temper tantrum that he's having. No, Nightmare has every right to be disgusted by Killer. What he did was not okay and might cost him his job, even though he was not the one to initiate the act and didn't condone it whatsoever. I just can't get over how all her comics brush over these things as if they're a normal occurrence and should be accepted to be cute or sexy or whatever. It's not. People argue that, well, doesn't porn and hentai portray these kinds of things? Why don't you go after that? I am going after that. I don't like the thought of someone getting off to disgusting and vile acts like this and have them be treated as something more than one of the worst crimes a human being can commit. 
thankfully, we're done with this god awful AU, so let's move on to Rogue's statement. I know a lot of you watching are going to be commenting, Stream, this stuff is like 4-5 to five years old, it's not fair for you to drag it up now. How do you even know she still supports what she drew back then? Allow me to show you this post that was made on February 15th of 2020, just barely a year ago discussing her thoughts on all of the aforementioned AUs. Let's start with the first part of this post. If you want to make a rant about something or someone you don't like, go ahead, but don't assume gross creepy shit because of it. Here's an example to think about. In the Undertale fandom, a lot, and I mean a lot of people are into Fonces, aka Sans X Papyrus, another ship I hate. And they are brothers. Think about it. Do you really think that, ah, these people are actually into incest? You really think that you cracked the cold and found a whole gold mine of incest freaks just by looking at Fonces? It's just silly and ain't true. In fact, in fact, Fonces shippers mostly always say that it's only for the sake of fictional shipping. They ain't gonna fuck their siblings because they ship two shitty walking talking skeletons. Okay, Rogue, let me tell you what I think about Fonces shippers. Yes, I think they're into incest. Look at the name of the fucking ship. I've unwillingly stumbled across smut of this ship before, and the brother aspect of the ship is very prevalent and it's creepy as all hell. You can't just say, oh stop judging me for things I like and draw when it's stuff like incest and selfless shipping. They're appropriating and normalizing incest. If you don't like me using fontcess as an example, look at the Gotcha Life community, where stories of real siblings trying to get with their older siblings because of Gotcha Heat videos are a very real concern for many people. The whole argument Rogue is using here is reminiscent of Shane Dawson's I didn't fuck my cat video. When you demonstrate strange behavior tied to a specific group of people, you can't then turn around and say, how dare you guys accuse me of being part of that group. And before anyone starts harassing Sansas and Fonses shippers in the comments, no, I do not condone harassment. I find these people personally to be questionable, but that's not an excuse to launch a huge hate mob against them. Now let's look at the second part of her response. I ain't phased by any of this, especially after 2016. A lot of poor souls that used to use Tumblr talk about their young selves on YouTube and how they just wanted to draw out of proportion, obviously depressed from reality shit for shits and giggles and how they got beaten to a pulp for it. That weird, obviously non-realistic shit always finds a way to become something political to these people. Like, are y'all proud of yourselves for ruining those people's lives just because they drew some things you didn't like? Hell, most of them were kids when they first joined Tumblr. I'm lucky I was an adult when I joined the internet. What a wonderful world we'll live in if we mind our own goddamn business. Like, help around excluding actual freaks from yours and your friend circle instead of caring about your precious characters that don't need a lawyer or your so-called protection. I'm not saying to get into weird out of the norm things. Always stay away with what's uncomfortable to you, of course. But like, if you unfortunately see it, scroll past that shit. There are many things that you can draw and make fun of for shits and giggles. Anything can be joked about when it's done correctly. People who have been bashed for it are not doing it correctly. And by correctly, I mean by telling the joke, they are offending the dark subject of the joke and all the people who have been affected by this dark topic. Simply drawing tee hee horny fresh wants to rape jammy is not a funny concept. It's treating rape as a joke and is highly offensive to rape victims. Trying to say that all this is a political thing shows a level of understanding of the situation that a child would have. Being upset over you sexualizing minors and using suicide, depression, and rape as plot points is not a political thing, it's a humanity thing. No one should be okay with this shit regardless of where they sit on the political spectrum. Rogue also acknowledges the fact that most of her fans are very young in this post, and yes, while I do agree with the fact that you should not be harassing kids for not knowing better, you should also not be teaching these kids that these things were okay in the first place, which is what your Tumblr was doing. And I'm I'm so sorry that we had to stick our noses in your business and you were teaching kids that non-consensual acts were acceptable and hot. My bad, my bad. We should have just continued scrolling, right? And ignored all of it. No! What kind of backwards logic is that? If you fucked up bad, people are going to talk about it. We shouldn't mind our own business when it comes to things like this because of the kids who are going to grow up thinking this sort of shit is okay. If you're on the internet and you find artwork of a ship you don't like between two characters that can both consent to being in that relationship, yeah, just scroll past it. There's no need to harass the person who posted it. But people saying they're uncomfortable seeing a minor version of a character being looted should be the norm, not ignoring and scrolling past it. And the longest update to the post. Alright, back to the good shit on this lovely site. Apparently I came across a rant about me. I love that stuff. Shit on me all you want, but when you're calling me gross shit and spreading misinformation out of your ass, that's a big oof right there. I'm not going to directly to respond to their post because if I do, some shit fucks who consider themselves my fans will attack that person and I don't want that shit. Let's begin. 
Oh, before we do, I'm not going to respond to the allegations concerning other AUs like Little Jam, Vampireverse, Jamie's Love, and NNJ because those were never supposed to have plots and aren't supposed to go anywhere story-wise. It's not for the sake of representation or reality. They are never meant to be normalized anything in them. None of my drawings are supposed to send a message or teach a moral. It's just shit post drawings. They all just center around shippings and NSFW smut. It doesn't matter if you're not intending to normalize that sort of behavior because that's exactly what your comics did regardless. You can draw all the smut in the world you want, but why have said smut include minor characters and literal rape? The way you portrayed these things was doing so in a way that normalized it, even if you didn't intend it to be. That was the effect, and it can clearly be shown with how your fanbase reacts to said work. This gives me the same vibe as, oh, you know, I didn't mean to say it was okay to go and kill people, I just made stories that center around how cool it is to kill people and justify those actions with my character feeling bad about it sometimes. You know there is a Sonic fanfiction where in every chapter Sonic fucks a different Nintendo character. Even the Game Grumps read it in their show and they thought it was dumb and hilarious. Imagine if someone complained about the realism and normalizing the products of that fanfic. How stupid would that be? I searched up what Rogue was talking about and there's a difference between what the Game Grumps were doing and what Rogue is doing. The Game Grumps treated the fanfiction with absurdity at the situation. Does this look like a shitpost to you? I haven't listened to the entirety of that episode yet, but if rape is used as a plot point like Rogue uses it, I would not be supporting that all the same. Trying to pass off these disgusting comics as just a shitpost is irresponsible and gross. In Invader Zim, the voice actors of both Zim and Dib find the ship of their characters funny and even joke around it and tease fans about it in cons. A ship between a bazillion year old alien and an 11 year old kid. I'm not into that ship, in fact I hate it, but I never ruined people's lives or called them gross things over it. Anyways, for real this time on what they said about PJ's daycare, cause I consider that the only thing that is not about shippings nor smut, and also the only thing that has a plot, simple as it may be. What they said in their post is in bold text and double quotation marks, the symbol text is what I responded. The premise of PJ's daycare was largely that an adult paper jam, I think 25, ran a daycare for the 1-6 to six year olds with the help of teenagers 12-13, to 15-16, goth, palette, blue screen, and gradient. Goth also tried to commit suicide in this one after believing palette rejected his advances. No rape occurred here, I think palette just didn't respond after goth confessed romantic feelings for him. Alright, talking about PJ's daycare now, first of all, goth and palette are the only teenagers in this AU. Blue screen and gradient are adults. Second, what are you talking about? Goth never wanted to kill himself because Palette didn't like him. The one who wanted to jump off a cliff was Gino, and the thing about Gino was he believes he's an adult and that he's better than other kids because he thinks like one. He wanted to join his brother Error in the afterlife because he thought that was the only way, but Error wasn't dead. After preventing him from jumping, PJ tells Gino that it was wrong and no adult nor child should do that. So here is the concrete proof that Rogue does not understand depression or suicide at all and has resulted in the portrayal of such subjects in her comics to be god-awful and sending terrible messages to her audience. Kids are not depressed because they want to act like an adult. And just because they're acting like adults, a normal and healthy kid would not even have the thought of suicide cross their mind even once. Acting like kids who are depressed and suicidal is the product of them trying to be more mature than their age. It's such a horrendous message to send to your audience, and if that's how you view kids with depression, no amount of words can describe how awful that is. The kids in PJ's daycare include are Young Error, Ink, Fresh, Lust, Fell Sands, and Swap Sands. Fresh, I believe, was either 3, 4, or 5, and was constantly hitting on slash flirting with the adult paper jam and even stalked him outside of the daycare. Really? You never saw a child liking an adult? The cute thing about it is that the adult can say, aw, that's nice, honey. And that's cute because the adult does not reciprocate the same feeling to the kid. It would be gross and wrong if the adult loved them back, but that's not the case. Look, again, I don't care about what you ship as long as you're treating it correctly and not shoving it in other people's faces, incest or otherwise. But as a result of this, a ton of minors in the fandom are now desensitized to these sort of ships. Look, I never believed in fiction getting into reality. I just have a thick line between fiction and reality that I never paid any mind to, and normally everybody else should, but apparently not. Just because you believe that fiction doesn't bleed into reality doesn't mean that it won't. And it does. So many of my friends who used to be fans of your work, and even fans who have come to me about this, have stated that for years they normalized the subjects of your work. And Rogue, you want to talk about how your work isn't affecting real kids? There is a person that I know that has been so greatly affected by the normalization of rape and abusive behavior that for years they were with someone who had abused them. If you don't believe that, what about the two girls who were so obsessed with Slenderman that they actually tried to murder a classmate to sacrifice to him? And the weebs that are so obsessed with the tsundere trope and anime in general that they try to act like a tsundere and use words that they don't even understand? And I'll mention here again, the gotcha life kids who are coming onto their siblings because of the videos they watch. No matter how much you deny it, fiction does bleed into reality. You might see a very thick line between reality and fiction, but guess who doesn't? 
kids. They're so very impressionable. And the content that you made was giving them all of the wrong impressions. And it shows how they continue to interact with your work. That's all the d direct response I'll do. And the person who made the rant goes off on my other ship post AUs. They go on throwing shade that I normalize pedophilia. All y'all Tumblr people love throwing around the P word like that, don't ya? What I know is that if you were to try and find someone else who is actually a goddamn pedo, you're supposed to report them or call the fucking police. But no. Welcome to Tumblies. You just block them because they hurt your free wings. Ooh woo, so wholesome, so quirky. Catch me coming on a real goddamn minor and then we'll talk. And no, that doesn't mean I'll draw that shit. If you ever find my NSFW site, it's full to the brim with adults. It's not cute and kawaii. Is a minor, you creeps. Rogue is acting like she can't be called out for these atrocious art pieces she's posted because she's never come on to a minor. That's not how this works. If you're drawing pedophilic ships and NSFW, anyone and everyone is well within their rights to call that shit out because it's nasty. Normal people just do not make NSFW sexualizing minors and romanticizing non-con and rape. I know that there are kinks where both parties roleplay that sort of scenario, but that's the thing. The two parties can consent to each other and are not actually raping each other. What you draw is actual rape and non-consensual acts. If your partner says, I'm tired, I don't want to do anything today, then you should back the hell off, not continue your advances. It doesn't matter if you consider these drawings to be shit posts. The way they're drawn and presented does not give off that vibe. The kids reading will not be taking this as a shit post. They'll be taking it seriously. Whether you meant it or not, you contributed to the romanticization of pedophilic ships, non-consensual sexual acts, rape, depression, and suicide. And you don't even realize what you've done wrong, so I know you haven't changed. You can't change what you don't know is wrong in the first place. So bringing all of this up is not just irrelevant because it's old. Until you've properly addressed how badly you fucked up with these drawings, this is all fair game to talk about. You do not deserve a platform if you're going to be using it for shit like this. You're 28, Rogue. You're almost 30. And it terrifies me to think that someone your age could still be thinking this way. I hadn't even realized until recently just how damaging the things Rogue has done are. I've spoken to a lot of people who used to or are still in the Undertale community, and we're all appalled that for so long we normalized the shit we saw in her comics. It wasn't until we got older and revisited them that we realized just how terrible they were. There are still kids who idolize her and see nothing wrong with the comics, and that scares me. These kids are so much more vulnerable to real predators because of the things that they've read. And the fact that we're giving a platform to someone like this is appalling to me. I do believe that people can make mistakes and change from them. But with Rogue, it's not one or two or even three big oopsies. It's a pattern of behavior documented thoroughly through the art she chooses to post and draw, and the comments she's made about said art. I'm not trying to claim that you can never write stories that explore the ideas of depression, suicide, rape, or horny teenagers. I'm saying if you choose to write stories about these things, you have to do it right and treat it with the respect and care that it deserves. Which is not what Rogue was doing. Until she addresses this, I think we should be warning kids to stay away from her content. The same way gotcha kids don't realize what they're doing is wrong, these kids are unlikely to realize that what they're reading is wrong either. Please spread this video around. Rogue has affected many, many members of the Undertale community with her art. I don't want to see more kids appropriating her art just because they think it's cute. This shit needs to stop. Do not support the Great Rogue.